Hey, welcome back. If you've been following along, you should have a dragon now that's able to jump when you click on the game screen or roll off of the tree stump. It's kind of cool, kind of fun, but I think it's time to actually kill our player or kill the dragon when he hits things. So the goal now is going to be to kill the dragon if he hits a stump or if he goes too high or maybe too low on the screen. To do that, we're going to create another script. So I'm going to go to the scripts folder again. If you're in assets, just go to scripts here and then we'll right click on the gray area, hit create and choose C sharp script. And we're going to call this dragon killer. I'm going to use a capital D R A G O N and then killer K I L L E R and I'm capitalize that K too. It's just the common casing for a class or a script file in C sharp. So use what's called Pascal case where we capitalize each letter or each first letter of each word. Now we'll open this up, just double click on it or hit enter with it selected and we should have a dragon killer script. Again, we don't need lines one and two, these grayed out ones. The black one here on line three using Unity Engine we do. Since I don't need these, I'm just gonna select them both and hit delete just to kind of clear that up. We also don't need this start section, so I'm gonna select it all again just with the mouse and hit delete. We can also use shift delete to delete the entire lines. Here, all we care about is the update. It's a lot like our jump method. In fact, in a lot of scripts, you'll find that we really only need things in update. Sometimes we'll put things in start or awake for initialization, but a lot of the time we just need code in our update to make it work. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want a couple things. First, we want to kill our player if they jump too high. I'm going to do that before we deal with collisions to trees. And to do that, we're going to add in another if statement. That's how we ask our questions, remember? So we type in the words, the word if, lowercase if, and then a parentheses, which is shift and nine. And we want to look at the transform position. Before we type that out, though, let's go look at the transform in Unity. So I'm going to go back over to Unity, and I'm going to select the blue dragon, and I'm going to zoom out here a little bit on the scene view with the mouse wheel and use the right mouse to drag around. And I want to look at this transform value. Do you see the X and the Y? We have a 2.57 value right now for my Y. And that's based on where this thing is. I'm going to drag it down and watch the number goes down. It goes to zero when I'm right at the middle. Pretty close. And if we go down below zero or below the middle, it goes to negative values and keeps going lower and lower. And if I go up, I see the number goes up. So I want to kill my player when they jump up to, I don't want really to hit them when they just kind of peek over. If they totally disappear though, I want to kill them. So I'm going to say somewhere right around here, which looks like a Y value of about six. Notice the Y goes up. So if they go over six, I'm going to kill them. If they're anywhere under that, so even if they're like right here, kind of poking over the top, I'll let them live. So let's do that. I'm going to release this dragon real quick. Go back over to my dragon killer script by double clicking on it. And we'll say if the transform, that was that component that we were moving around that had the X, Y, and Z on it. And we want to look at the position. In fact, let's just bounce right back over there and look at that. We're looking at the transform here. And then we're looking at the position component of the transform. Look at that. That's just a nice little property or field there. Let's go back to the dragon killer. And we want to look at the Y value of that. So we want to check if the Y value is greater than 6. So to do that, we use the greater than symbol, which is just shift and the key two to the right of M or just to the left of the question mark. And we want to check if it's greater than six. If it is, we want to do something. Now, I want to point out that we could also do something like 6.2, 6.5, whatever the value is. If you need a decimal in there, just type in the decimal, it'll work fine. I'm going to go with six though. So if the position is greater than six, I want to kill our player. Now, right now, our player doesn't really have much of a life cycle. Our player just kind of is in there, the game starts, and they're instantly falling. So we can easily restart it just by restarting that level. We can kill the player just by you know, re reloading the level. To do that, we call Scene Manager. Now, the casing is very important here, capital S and capital M. And it didn't auto-complete. Notice that like, if I hit dot, nothing happens. That's because this using statement here, using Unity Engine, doesn't include the scene manager. We actually need another Unity or using statement that's going to be Unity Engine dot scene manager. Now I could type that, or I can hold down Control and hit period with it over it, and I can select this using Unity dot scene management option. Notice that it put it up there, 
So now we have using unity.scene management. And you can think of these using statements a lot like libraries or pre-made chunks of code. And we're just telling our script that, hey, we're gonna use things that deal with scene management. So bring that in and have that ready for us. And the reason for that, just there are a lot of reasons for it. I probably shouldn't dive into them, but just know that you need to use the correct things sometimes. And control period will almost always give you that pop-up to allow you to see it again. Let's just see that one more time. If I delete it, I select scene manager. If it's spelled correctly, control period, and then enter to add that using statement. So it's a call scene manager dot, just like everything else. And we want to call load scene and open parentheses with shift nine. And look here, it takes a integer, that's what the INT means, of a scene build index. And it's got up and down arrows. I can actually click these and see different options. I could also load a scene by name. So I could put quotes in the name of a level in there or an index in some other options. Now, what I really want to do is just reload the first scene. So the first scene is going to be at index zero. Because we're coding, everything is pretty much indexed at zero. The first thing in a list is always going to be item number zero. In our scenes, it's the same. So we load scene zero. And again, we have the error. So if we put the mouse over, we notice that we're missing a semicolon. So I hit that. It's just to the right of L with no shift. Formatting cleaned up because the error is gone. And let's get rid of that little star there by holding down control and hitting S to save off our file. So let's jump back over to Unity. We're gonna select the blue dragon and we need to add that dragon killer script. Now notice I can't really see space down there to add component. I can scroll down, up and down, but I can also collapse these. See these little arrows here? If I click on them, I can collapse them and then I can cl click them again to expand them. I'm gonna collapse them down and just add another component. I'll hit the X to clear my search. And then if I scroll down, well, I can't really see it, but if I go to scripts, I could probably find it. Or I can go back, I can see it right there, but I'm gonna go back and do it the way I normally do it, which is just start typing. Start typing DRA and it appeared, I hit enter and the script is on there. So let's hit play. What's this gonna do? Oh, let's try it. So we jump, jump, I'm gonna go up above six and look at that, my game reloaded. You can see the selection went away, the scene collapsed. What happened was my game completely reloaded. And every time I go up too high, it's gonna reload. Cool, well, what about if I fall down too low? Let's fix that too. So we'll go back to the Dragon Killer script. And we wanna check again the position, this Y value here, but we wanna check if it goes too low. So what I like to do here is take both of these lines, I'm gonna hold the left mouse button clicking right here, drag it down to the end of line 10, and I'm gonna copy it with Control and C or I can right click and hit copy right here. Either way. Then I'll click on the end and hit enter to add a new line. And then I use control and V to paste. So now I have a copy of the existing check. So now we're just checking it twice. That doesn't really help. Not exactly what we want to do. What I want to do though is check to see if the position's Y value goes below some value. So I'm going to reverse the direction of this greater than and make it a less than. And then I wanna use a value that, well, we wanna kill the player if they go below. So I'll go back in here, I'll select my dragon and I'll just drag him down right where he's off the screen. So if they drop down too far, maybe just their horn showing, what is this, negative 5.63. So I'll use that as a value. I'll go with like negative 5.6. So I'm gonna move him back up, get him back in a nice starting position, go to my dragon killer script and I'll say if he is less than negative 5.6, there we go. Now I'll save that with Control S again and go back into Unity and let's see if that worked. So I should roll forward and die when I get too far. Perfect, so now if I go too high or too low, my dragon dies. We're almost there, the last thing we wanna do is kill the player if they also hit this stump. So to do that, we're gonna open up the dragon killer script one more time and after this update, let me show you this little collapse button. If I click this, you see this shows me everything that was an update has collapsed and been hidden away. I'm gonna expand it again because I wanna add something after it. So I'm gonna go at the end of line 14, add in two new lines, just so I have an extra space here between them. And I'm gonna add in an on collision enter 2D method. Now the way I do this is I just start typing ONC and look at the autocomplete options. I have an on canvas group change, not what I want. On collision enter, very close. And an on collision enter 2D, which is the one that I wanna hit. So make sure that you pick the 2D one, don't hit the other one or your stuff's just not gonna work. 
So select on collision enter 2D and you can double click or I just hit enter and it's gonna automatically create this entire method. So I have a private method, just means that it can't be called from other code. Don't worry about that right now. We'll talk a lot more about that in depth later. Um, we have the void keyword, which just means it doesn't return anything. Again, not super important right here. You can't really change it. All we care about is this on collision enter 2D. This is a special method provided by Unity on anything that has this mono behavior on it. Now you'll see a lot of this as we go forward, but any component that we add to our game objects can deal with these collisions just by adding this method. And as soon as it hits something, it's gonna call the code right in between our squiggly braces. Just like update calls it every frame, on collision enter 2D, we'll call it every time we crash into something. Now what we wanna do here if we crash into something is just kill the player. So we'll do the same thing that we did right here. We'll call scene manager, oops, there we go. Typo and autocomplete dot load scene and pass in a scene index of zero again. Now I'm gonna save that again with control S and we'll tab back into Unity, hit play. And hopefully if everything went well, yep, look at that. Our dragon dies every time he hits the tree. Now if I bounce, he's okay. If I hit the tree, I'm dead. If I go too high, I'm dead. I think we're kind of making some progress, right? We've got a somewhat of a game loop. We're not quite there where it's fun yet, but we're getting pretty close and it's time to start adding in those features. So get this working and then when you're ready to come over to the next section, we'll start making things move, putting in enemies, adding fire shots, all kinds of fun stuff. Again, if you like this kind of thing, something you're interested in, make sure that you hit like, subscribe and share. Make sure that I know that this is the kind of thing people are interested in. And if you have questions, just drop them down below.